Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Level Psychology course. Today we're going to be looking at classical conditioning. The learning theory of attachment. There are two main theories that explain why organisms attach. In our last few videos we've been looking at the evolutionary theory of attachment, but this video we can look at the learning theory of attachment. If you want to check out the other videos be sure to go on the channel and visit the playlist. The learning theory states that humans have drivers such as hunger and comfort that need to be met. The drivers need to be reduced in order to have healthy living. Infants form attachments in order to get the caregivers to suppress these drivers. So what is classical conditioning? Classical conditioning is the way that we're going to suppress these drivers by learning through the association of an unconditioned stimulus and a neutral stimulus in order to get a conditioned response. If you don't know what this means, don't worry, we're going to go and run through some examples with diagrams. Pavlov conducted an experiment for classical conditioning with his dogs. A stimulus is an event which will trigger a response, and then the response is the reaction made when a stimulus has been detected, and this is the basis of how classical conditioning will work. So how does classical conditioning work? In Pavlov's study, he tried to teach dogs how to get a conditioned response from a neutral stimulus. A conditioned response is one that has been taught. So if you see conditions anywhere in this video, remember it means taught. A neutral stimulus is one that naturally occurs in the environment. So he did this with dogs, bells, and food. He showed a dog and then got it to drool by showing it food. He then showed the dog food again and played a bell at the exact same time. The dog then drooled after seeing the food. Then he only played the bell and the dogs actually drooled when they heard it because they associated that being the neutral stimulus um, with, the with the food, probably wasn't pizza but just an illustration, and then that would be the condition response. This can be applied to how infants are forming attachments with their caregivers and there's three steps to it. The first is step one, preconditioning. Here the infant is subject to a driver, for example hunger. The infant reacts to guessing food, which will then make it happy. So we have an unconditioned stimulus. This is a stimulus which is going to suppress the driver, in this case, hunger. So if we give the unconditioned stimulus, we then get an unconditioned response, which makes the baby happy. The next step is conditioning. Here we have a neutral stimulus, where the mother is the figure which is going to bring the baby its food. In the step, the baby is going to associate with the unconditioned stimulus, with the mother bringing it. So the unconditioned stimulus is going to be the food, but we add the mother, who is the neutral stimulus, to this. So remember in Pavlov's study, the unconditioned stimulus was the food, and we add the neutral stimulus, which is the bell. In this case, we're going to get a reaction from the baby, which is going to be an unconditioned response. So the baby becomes happy because the mother is going to bring it the food. This then leads us to the final step, which is post-conditioning. Here we have the mother, which is going to make the baby happy. The mother now is no longer a neutral stimulus, but in fact is a conditioned stimulus. What this means is that because this is now coming, so for example, if the mother comes towards the baby, the baby is going to associate the mother with the fact that it's going to become happy again, and just having the mother around is going to make the baby have a conditioned response of having its driver suppressed, in theory, hence making it happy and forming an attachment between the two of them. Here you have some questions on classical conditioning. What I'd like you to do now is have a go at responding to all of these on a separate sheet of paper by pausing the video. Once you've got all your answers, hit play to check them out. Here are your answers. If you got all of these right, congratulations, I'd advise you to move on to the next video, which will be on clamp operant conditioning, which is the other part of the learning theory of attachment. If you need to revise any more of your A-level subjects or check out this lesson's notes, be sure to visit www.revisealevel.co.uk. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.